Hey, it's Barry. And Dave. And Dan. All right. What are we doing here, Dave? Today we've got a special video for you. We are going to cover trailer maintenance, trailer tips, because we know nothing can ruin a good fishing trip and breaking down with that trailer. And, and many of these issues that come up with the trailer won't happen if we maintain a good maintenance level on each trailer. And we're going to touch on some of the top, the so call them the top three, top five, and then some plus footage on other maintenance items regarding the, the boat trailer. Good idea. Yeah. Don't do what I do. I wait till stuff disappears. I'm like, where did that go? And then I go replace it. And you can <laughs> find it right. on the dirt road to headwaters. Exactly. We're going to put it, you know, we're going to put a lost and found box for trailer That's parts at the end. <laughs> you just pile them in there and you go back and look for what you lost. Yep. Okay, folks. So, yep. So, we're going to, we're here with Dan. We're going to go around Dan's boat today. And we're just going to start from the tongue. We're going to work our way around, talk about some key things that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to. And, uh, some things, you know, just when you're at the ramp, and probably we'll just start out with, when you're at the ramp, you've got your boat in the water, you've spent the day fishing, when you come back, go to get your truck, just stop for that two minutes. Yep. Walk around your trailer and give it an inspection. We'll talk about those things that you should inspect mm -hmm. real quick. It doesn't take but a couple minutes, but it could, like Dave said, it could save you a big hassle coming yeah. down the road. Yeah, so, especially uh, if you're coming from northern, any distance, you don't want your day mm -hmm messed up but if you're coming from Tennessee or Georgia the Northeast you don't want to be stuck on the side of the interstate with a broken trailer no. nope 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 no. so been there done that and as yeah you're, <laughs> as, as, uh, uh, many of you know we if you're fishing headwaters you've got this wonderful well, to get to the headwaters boat ramp a three mile track on a very bumpy and dirt loose gravel type of road yeah. and it just wrecks havoc with trailers we see trailer parks parts on this road all the time they're just scattered all over yep. the place mm -hmm. so uh, really important uh, th doesn't matter which which road you're on you want regardless you want your trailer to be in tip-top shape so on we go yep sounds good and that's not meaning to scare you all off from running down the grave <laughs> road if your trailer in good shape you'll be fine but just take your time going down the road yep, so sure. we'll go ahead and let's kick into it right now all right let's do it Okay, folks, we've got four main things we're going to talk about, and then we got some bonus things, but we're going to go ahead and start with what, talking to Dan, we feel is the most important thing when it comes to your trailer maintenance, and that would be hubs. So let's jump right into that. Hubs, okay, so on this particular model Ranger boat trailer, these are oil-filled hubs. There are still a lot of boats on the road that are oil-filled hubs. Uh, I used, what was recommended to me by Ranger is a 50-weight oil, straight 50 in these hubs. So what, what we have, this hub is similar to what everybody's seen, but similar, but vastly different. So inside this dusty hub here, there's oil inside this hub, not grease. So it's totally different than all the other stuff that you get like the bearing buddies mm -hmm. and whatnot. Right, right. Um, to check what I do with, okay, let's talk about the bearings themselves. The best way I found it to check a bearing is to actually jack the boat up and jack the tire up off the ground and spin the mm -hmm. tire and listen. If you hear a grinding sound, you got problems. So uh, hubs are not a super easy thing to fix. I've fixed, uh, fixed these. Um, actually the bearings aren't the easiest thing to fix because you have to press the mm. races in um, if you're not experienced and know how to do that and don't have the tools you're best to have uh, a trailer company or trailer repair maintenance shop do that kind of work for you because you don't want those bearings uh, misaligned in any way yeah right you, so. now they do sell the hub assembly mm -hmm. with the bearings all pressed three pressed right, right. and they, but you have to make sure it's the proper size bearing oh, yeah. for the spindle that you're running and that it's the proper lug pattern for your rim to fit so you could be uh hopefully not but stuck on the side of the road and go get a hub put it on and then you're find out this yeah your uh, tire won't uh remount That's yeah so you lose, just take all the, the old hub right okay. right mm -hmm. so there are other hubs that you have the bearing buddies where you'll use a good old yep. uh, grease gun i normally use a marine grease uh, it, it uh it works better when you have a lot of uh, wet conditions that 
They're, they have it's formulated for a specific kind of purpose. Um, so I would recommend a marine grease uh, with your bearing buddies. The bearing buddies look similar to this, but they usually have a dust cap on them. You pull the dust cap off. Correct me if I'm wrong. No. Yeah, there's usually yeah, a dust yep, cap, yep. and then, then you have a dipple. zert fitting yep. to attach your grease gun. Yep. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you keep going you, until it hits your shoe, and then you know it, you got it over full. That's over full. Yeah. <laughs> usually, usually you pump your grease gun until uh, you see a lot of a little bit of the grease yep. coming out of the. Yep. Some of them will have a small hole. Some of them will have a small hole indicator, and once the grease starts coming out of that, that small hole, you know you're full. Yep. All right. Right, but the best way I think to check them is to jack up the trailer, spin them, listen to them. Sometimes I'll even allow my finger to run on, on the center of the hub to feel any vibration. Mm -hmm. Any roughness in a bearing is a no-go. It needs to be replaced. It's uh, rounded cylindrical shaped pieces of really incredibly hard metal that rolls against what's called the race. And uh, if you have any pitting, or flatting, flattening of those bearings, you could lose the entire tire, rim, assembly, hub off going down the interstate and you could hurt someone else or yourself uh, and you don't want that. That's not That's not right. A cool you put thing. a lot of money into your boat, make sure you spend the time on the trailer. Yep. Make sure it's in good run condition. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for hubs. We're going to jump off to number two right now. All right, we came around the other side of Dan's boat here because there's another issue we want to talk about when it comes to the hubs that's really important to make sure you pay attention to. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, these are oil-filled hubs. And yes, my boat trailer's dirty from the road, so... You can say something if you want or not. Step back just a moment. Comment below. If, you, yeah. if you'd like if you to come down here Dan and wash, to wash his boat. boat again, yeah. like I did just the other day. Earlier volunteers to wash your boat. Oh, they, they, if they got something to say, they should be volunteering to come down to I wash know, it. I and like I give you a hard time. Idea. Yeah. So, one way to oil filled hubs, this is like a sight window or is a sight window. Notice this one's kind of a yellowish color. Very cool. Step back. And notice this one is almost black or dark. I'm trying to rub the dust off. This hub has no water in it. This hub does have water in it. What happens, you get even one tiny drop of water in there, it can discolor the oil inside of the hub. This one, I, I'm in the process of working on it. I recently uh, drained the oil and put more oil in, but as you can see, there's another tip, guys. Oil-filled hubs, you see this? This is all oil that has leaked. So I've got to recheck my uh, set screw, the little port screw, to make sure it's tight. Sometimes what also can happen is the uh, the seals around the back side, this piece of metal pops out just like a bearing buddy. There's a, an o-ring on the back and then there's a bearing seal on the back side of the tire okay. uh, that, that, is, that rides on the spindle. So I could have a problem either in this this area here could because this is allow it, it moves in and out with difference of temperature when it expands and contracts so i could have a problem with a the seal there the seal that, that's on the back side of this piece of metal or the seal on the back side of the tire or the hub uh, there's a, a seal back there that could have a nick in it that's causing the water intrusion in this hub and those things can be replaced right on Okay, folks, there you go. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the first tip. We're going to go ahead and jump into number two right now. All right, tip number two when it comes to trailer maintenance is going to be the good old tires. This is what gets you down the road and back. So what do we need to do when we're talking about tires here, Dan? Well, Barry, I recently replaced my tires for a, one of the same reasons I've seen a lot of other guys. I actually saw one the other day, a tire completely blown out. I did not have a blowout, thank God I did not have the blowout. Uh, I, uh, these tires are steel belted radials and I noticed when I, on my trailer inspection that in the tread it was disformed. There was a, a lump on my tread and usually it's in a linear fashion or you'll see a bubble on the mm -hmm. sidewall of a tire. And that's an indication that the steel belts that's inside the tire, remember it's steel, steel rusts. So as these tires age, the steel rusts, which causes an expansion, and it causes a separation of the tread from the tire itself. 
So, always inspect your tires for any deformities on the tread or the sidewalls. Any bubbles, lumps, bumps that are not uh, it shouldn't consistent. Be there. <laughs> it shouldn't be there. Anything out of the ordinary. That means, yeah, you need to replace those tires. Now, um, also what you need to look for is dry rotting, mm -hmm. cracking of the tires. It's a good indi indication of kind of how old the tires are and how much abuse they've had. Um, when I replaced these tires, I did not. Ex I didn't just replace one. I replaced all five, which includes my spare, obviously. And uh, the guys at the tire shop told me, "Well, you really need to replace them because the tires are old." Now I didn't really want to do that mm -hmm. because it was a lot more money. However, he was correct because this is the second time I've had the problem over the past several years. So there's information on the tires that give him an indication of how old they are. If you got tires that are eight years old, they may need to be replaced. Yeah. Um, because you don't want to have a blowout. Typically, what happens if you're going too fast on the interstate, you could blow out a tire and ruin your fenders. These fenders are very expensive on any trailers that are made by any manufacturer now. Uh, but age of tire uh, is a is a really a big deal, and you're better off to just go ahead and replace them all. Yep. Because if one has a deformity. The other ones aren't far behind. Exactly. And if something yeah. bad goes wrong, that can mean a lot more than just your trailer. It can mean your whole boat. And that's even more yep. expensive than a new set of tires, for sure. Yep. Let's talk about uh, another thing that we were ta discussing earlier, uh, lug wrench. Let's talk uh, about... yes. Let's talk about lug size, because here's a situation that may come up, folks. You know, you, if we don't, you know, we kind of just figure, well, hey, the lug wrench in my truck's going to go ahead and fit the lugs on my tires, you know, or the spare. And this situation has come up more than once that I've seen where somebody's got a flat, they run down, they grab their lug wrench out of their truck, they go back, well, uh-oh, it's too small or you right. know, it doesn't fit. Then what? Okay, so I got other things in the truck that we must talk about that goes along <laughs> with this. So yeah, I use a different kind of jack than, yep. what, I, uh, than what comes with mm -hmm. a typical pickup truck or SUV. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right now, tell you guys I was at a regional tournament in Alabama and I was far far from home and all I had was what was came with the truck mm -hmm. I came back from pre-fishing for this tournament at the end of the day with a flat tire so I go this has an allen screw here you pop this off you see the lug nuts my lug wrench didn't fit so off to the other parts place we went I had to leave the trailer there unhook the trailer mm -hmm. and I bought an entire set of sockets Okay, find out which socket size you need for your trailer mm -hmm. and buy your sockets, buy extensions, which I also have in the truck, and what I call a breaker bar. Right. Because the little wimpy things that come with the truck sometimes are not enough. This is, you know, they're, not, they're not super expensive yeah, really. Right. Uh, but get a whole set and make sure you have the right size for your lug wrench, or excuse me, for your lug nuts. Uh, I use these all the time Yeah. for yeah. other things. I use it, I actually like this breaker bar when I'm rotating the tires on the truck. Um, this is great. On the side of the road, I like a better quality jack because they're, the manufacturers really aren't worried about providing you with a hydraulic jack, is which I, what I have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's useful for other things. Changing the tire on your truck, changing the tire on your boat, have the right size make sure this is a standard measurement here my truck happens to be metric so these won't fit exactly the same gotcha. it's always good to have the exact size that you need uh it, it'll pay for itself in the long run yeah absolutely yep. you yep. just go to change that spare i want flat and that spare can't come off then what do you do then you're stuck then you got to call <laughs> some dude out there to come do exactly. manly stuff for you that a man should be able to do himself there you right? go that's it so also um if I could, I'll go get my jack out of the truck and get my extensions. Uh, there's something important to remember uh, with a jack. Well, as then well, let's get the jack. We'll be right let's back. Do it. And we're back with the jack. Back with, Dan. Back with the jack. <laughs> so. Okay, guys. So, what I found in the past is, uh, you know, you have bottle jacks. They're a little tall. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, car jack or truck jacks. Most guys are towing their boats with a truck or an SUV. Right. They're kind of insufficient. Yeah. So what I did is I purchased... Or, or even worse, the scissor jack. The, oh, they're terrible. And they're <laughs> they, not stable. They bend and yeah, everything um, else. I like a hydraulic style jack. You can lift a lot more weight. Mm -hmm. 
keep in mind when you if you look under your trailer guys you're going to find that your axles and your jacking points are pretty low to the ground in a lot of situations so you're going to need to get it uh, get your ja a jack that's low enough that if you have a blowout and this is down another four or five inches that you can get your jack under right now something i mentioned a few minutes ago are extensions these extensions if i put the uh, put my socket just on my breaker bar these lug nuts are inset so they're in deep so sometimes you, you need an extension so you you can get your uh, the socket completely mm -hmm. on. I right. like the deep wall socket. So when I'm changing the tire on this trailer, I put this little socket or excuse me extension on with my socket, and then you can reach in Gives to you the lug it, nuts yeah. and get get it seated properly. Just as you need, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to be going at them a little sideways and caddy wonker because you're going to wind up stripping something out. Right. Right on. There we go. I think that's all we need on that stuff. That's going to do it for tip number two. We're going to be back with hot tip number three right now. All right, back with hot tip number three, probably the third most important thing you want to pay attention to. And this goes back to what we're talking about. When you come back from the water, got your boat up on the bank, walk over and definitely check out your bunk holders here. This is you're going to find you know, just look around the parking lot like we're talking about you're, you'll see some that are jacked up with zip ties duct tape everything under the yep. sun make sure you check this out so dan let's talk a little bit about these brackets here and uh okay why it's important okay so we have these little stanchions or stands here where the bolt bracket is uh, is attached it is an l-shaped bracket with a bolt that goes through and holds this up that is then <laughs> Uh, bolted through the bunk onto this L-shaped bracket. Now the reason mine look kind of new is because they're kind of new. Kind of new. <laughs> uh, I had a few years ago, I came back from fishing, I happened to walk by my truck and trailer. I look and I see my bunk is a little off from where it should be. So upon further inspection I found that my bracket, my bunk bracket, mm -hmm. was completely rusted out. So, uh, and then I looked further and almost all of them were rusted out. Yeah. So most of these bass boat trailers, at least this year model, uh, a lot of them when they uh, manufactured them, these are just painted steel. Okay. So um, I gathered my parts that I needed, went to my local uh, marine mechanic. They had the parts there for my trailer, but I bought galvanized. I did not buy steel. I bought galvanized steel. Then I cleaned them, got the oil off of them, primed them, and painted them just to give me a few more years mm -hmm. so they don't rust. Uh, you saltwater guys, you guys know all about this stuff. It's an aggravation here in Florida, uh, but it's something you need to check. Yep. Because what happens is if these brackets rust out, if this bunk falls off, now what's holding up your boat? This very large single piece of steel, and it's gonna wear a hole in the bottom of your hole. Nobody wants that. Yeah, but it holds it really nice, though. It'll once, hold, once, once it it's worn in, a hole, yeah, it, it'll it be it. permanent. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, and it won't slide off your trailer very easily. <laughs> but uh, I've had that issue. I've replaced them. Yes, it takes some work to get it done. Yep. If you're not uh, physically capable of doing it, or you don't have uh, the tools to do it, take it to a, a reputable trailer shop. Yep. I'm do it. They'll probably lift the boat off the trailer and then and rebuild it what i did is i went got my parts went back to the boat ramp made sure i had all of my tools so i didn't have to come back to the house right dumped the boat off and uh and replaced my angle brackets yeah and while you're at it check your bunks too um some guys may have the more like we got a hard plastic mm -hmm. you know bunks um, which obviously aren't going to rot out, but still there are a lot of trailers out there that have the wood bunks. You want to make sure yep. you're checking that, check your carpet that's on them. If it's starting to get bad, make sure you, you want to replace that. Um, if you're getting wood rot, or you want to make sure that's another thing because even if your brackets are good, but your wood's starting to rot out, that's going to loosen up that connection as well. So right. you definitely don't, you know, coming in, when you're coming in a ramp sometimes, depending on the wind, you know, what's going on, you may be hitting that thing a little harder than normal. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you certainly don't want to be knocking your bunks off of your brackets and things. So yep. yeah, you know, another piece of advice, something I did when I replaced these brackets is I noticed that my carpet was falling here mm -hmm. because they just used like a galvanized staple. Yep. Well, those galvanize over time. They're wet all the time and they stay wet for long periods of time because of the carpet. They rust out. 
so I got a staple gun and I got stainless staples. Okay. And I, when I had them off, and this is the key. If you already got them off, guys, just try to go ahead and do everything. When I had them off, I restapled all my carpet before I put them back on, and I didn't have to have uh, have to go back and do more work again in Miss Fishing. Right, and that's a pretty easy thing to do while you're there. Yep. All right, great tip. That's going to wrap it up for number three. We're going to come back for number four right now. All right, guys, we're back with number four. four? Number four. All right, first thing you need to do when you get a boat, doesn't matter if it's new, used, whatever. Dan hasn't done this yet, but you really need to just take these fenders, just take them off and just ditch them. They just get in the way. <laughs> um, it's really not the best thing. Okay, just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> it's important because, and the reason I say that, because if you're not paying attention, what's going to happen? They are going to fall off. They're going to fall off. When you're running down the road, and you're going to go, what in the heck happened to my fender when you get home? And you're like, something's missing. Something's missing. Something's missing on my trailer, fellas. So, uh, being I've got thousands of miles on my trailer. I've been all over the state of Florida, all up in uh, Alabama, Georgia. Uh, a lot of miles on this trailer. So, over time, things wear out. Mm -hmm. Now, being that we're at headwaters, we have a lot of washboard road going on it. Multiple days out of the week, things start to come apart. Shaking, jostling yep. around. Uh, something I recently discovered that is on my list to fix is my fender is now loose. Now I have several bolts that are actually holding it on, but there's one, there was a bolt here. Right. Okay, I crawled under the trailer the other day and found that where the bolt was, the fi these are fiberglass fenders on this particular trailer. Where the bolt was with the washer, over time it vibrated enough to where it actually wallowed out a hole about the size of a 50 cent piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I have a loose fender. So that's on the docket to get fixed. Also, you can see a piece of wood here. The inside of the particular, most boat trailers, the inside of the fenders are plywood that are covered with carpet. You can see this has some sun damage because it's always in the direct sun when the boat's off the trailer. Right. So I need to replace the carpet. However, these are riveted on the top of the fender with large rivets through the back side. Oh, yeah. So what I have is a problem of my plywood is now loose. What I've done to, to alleviate the problem temporarily is I bolted it with a stainless steel bolt with big, two big flat washers mm -hmm. and a nylon locking nut. Um, I've got two or three that are on there so I won't lose my uh, part of my fender going down the road. Right. But it is also on the dock to be fixed. I've got several things that I need to work on. But it's a, constant, a mm -hmm. constant thing that you need to maintain. Just like your truck, you need to maintain your trailer to get your boat safely to and from the ramp. Right. Just like you maintain the boat, the trailer is just as important. Yep. It's just one of those things that sometimes we tend to overlook. Hey, as we're going through these tips, go ahead and comment below what's the last thing that you know happened to your trailer yeah. and you were like, oh, knucklehead me, should have done what? Uh -huh. Tightened up your fender, greased your hubs, you know, what? what is it that happened to your trailer? You're just like, that was stupid. I should have probably taken care of that sooner. So comment below on that because we're going to go ahead and jump to number five right now. All right, guys, before we go ahead and continue on with number five, we do want to make sure that when you're coming down here, if you're looking for that guy, don't forget to get hold of Dan. You're going to get his information below right now. Dan, what's your website? Uh, fishhand.net. So that's fishhand.net. And we'll be with Jerry next week doing another special type of video, but you want to make sure that you go check out Jerry's site. We're going to link him up below as well. Vero Beach Big Bass Charters. So we're going to have, again, the link below. Make sure that you're going to visit him at the correct link in the description. When you're coming on down, hey, no reason to have to go through trailer maintenance when you let him and Jerry, who would be standing right here, uh, let them beat up their trailers for you. Go out and have a great day on the water with these guys. So again, information will be on the screen and down in the description below. So now we're going to go ahead and jump to number five, which is really important at nighttime. It is the cause of not only people not necessarily seeing your trailer, but can also get you a big fat ticket that you mm -hmm. probably don't want. And that's going to be lights. And lights, I can tell you from personal experience, Dave and I have run into some light issues going down the bump, 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 bump road. So let's jump into lights. Notorious. See, see picture below. Yeah. <laughs> Notorious yes. lights. So in the boating world, lights on a boat trailer 
everybody's had problems. I don't mm -hmm. think there's anybody, unless you just pull it out of the factory, I don't think there's anybody that's yeah. not had problems with boat trailer lights. Um, I think that's for the main reason is because they get dunked in the water all the time. Mm -hmm. And secondary, they get overlooked. We don't think about it. We go to work, our truck, our cars, we, we maintain that stuff. We notice it more. We get off work for the weekends and we're headed out to the lake. Well, now you've hooked up your boat. It's four o'clock in the morning. You gotta get to the lake and, you're and, and you got a light that doesn't work. That was happening to me. I recently, uh, I think it was last week, I replaced this light. It doesn't look like it, but it's <laughs> new, okay? So there are some things with trailer lights that I have found that make a big difference. One, I've gotten away from the uh, lights that allow water to come inside mm -hmm. the light itself. Submersible lights, guys, that's, to me, don't buy it unless it's submersible. What happens, those old sockets and things, they get corrosion. I'm yep. sure you guys have seen that. Uh, they get corroded and it makes such a mess of everything. And they, you, with electrical stuff, if you have a bad contact, it's not gonna work or it's gonna work improperly. This happens to be an LED. I really like the LEDs, mm -hmm. they're nice and bright. You, yep. can, you know, you hit the brakes, people can see your trailer. You don't want somebody rearing in your, your boat because you're <laughs> likely to lose an entire motor, power poles, Right. And it, you're going to miss your whole day. And you may even run your whole boat. So, some other tips that I have for trailer lights. One, if you... I don't want to get too far ahead. Sometimes you have to rewire the whole trailer. Nobody wants to do that, but it's not hard. I've done that before. Mm -hmm. um, if you put new lights on and you're still having trouble, rewire the doggone thing. Because that's going to eliminate all the garbage that's under there. Pull the old yep. wires out. Put the new wires in. This particular trailer has tubes where the wires go into the tube. Plan it out. Think about it ahead of time. Attach your new wire to your old wire and use that as to, to string your new wire so you don't have to do it one at a time like threading a needle. Also, I was going to say, and one quick point on that too, because I know we've run into this. You know, um, you'll go ahead and get the light fixed, and then you're like, well, why didn't well, it's just still not working? And then when you start tracing the wires back, you'll find one wire has got a little, it's got a break mm -hmm. in it. And you're like, really, that's all it was? I didn't even need to replace the light. So if your wiring starts to look old, cracked, that which happens a lot with older wiring going mm -hmm. in out of water constantly, um, they will start to crack. So check your wiring um, as well before if you just find that yep. you got in and you can check the bulbs if you're on the old style just pop one out pop a new one in but right. um, yeah definitely check those wires for little cracks and, breaks. and also something that that's usually one of the biggest problems that we don't realize is your ground wire this light mm -hmm. on the back is exactly the same as this this white wire is a ground wire this actually bolts directly to the frame of the trailer yep. if you do not have a proper ground your lights will not work you gotta have a proper ground. Also, when you're connecting wires, this one has an actual connector, which mm -hmm. I cut off because I don't have the connector under the trailer. Right. I always use heat shrink uh, wire connectors. These are butt connectors here. I don't know if you can see those, Dave. It's called a butt connector. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll cut the, you'll have two wires. You put your red to red, black to black. You put these in, you strip the wire down. There can be tutorial videos online on how to properly crimp a wire. Make sure you crimp it properly. But these, if you'll notice, that the ends of this connector are larger. So you can, the heat shrink, uh, you just apply about heat. You're using heat shrinkers, yep. You apply heat to them, uh, and this shrinks down and, and covers over the wire and keeps any water out mm -hmm. from this new electrical connection. Remember, if you have a bad connection, your light's not going to work. I always use a heat shrink uh, connector. That way I don't have water intrusion into my wires. It will, they're expensive, they're a little expensive. Yeah. Another two or three dollars more than the cheap ones. It's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it. Use a heat shrink. For sure. Makes a big difference. Yep. So check those lights. Um, sometimes the newer vehicles, I know Dave's vehicle will like, let you know that one of your mm -hmm. lights is not working properly. So that's a, you know, pay attention to it. Yep. Don't put it off for ages. Um, like you said, you get up at four o'clock in the morning, you run out, you hook your boat up, you take off, take the time, 
to at least, you know, if you got somebody with you, check your lights before you take off, mm -hmm. make sure everything's working right. The last thing you want is a ticket on the way down to the ramp. Absolutely. Something goofy like that. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up for tip number five. And now we're going to go into a few bonus tips on a couple, just a few more things that are really important to take a look at. So hang with us. we got some good stuff coming. All right, folks, we're back for our bonus tips. But before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break just to talk, call out our sponsors. That's going to be the Davis House Inn, which is in Sebastian. It's a great place to stay. We always mention it. And the folks that stay there love it. Great big rooms close to you. Here is talk about all the time. Close to great places to eat, a dock right on the water. If you want to take a kayak trip with the family, get hold of Dave because he is Mr. Kayak. He'll show his website down below. If you want to take an eco tour, if you want to take a fishing trip, whatever it may be, that's where he launches from. Beautiful location. So uh, make sure you go ahead and hit up Kyle and Paul down there at Davis House Inn for your reservations. Hooked on Headwaters and you'll get a discount. You know, I'm thinking my discount for uh, America Bay Works. And for another place to stay, you want to make sure that you check out Jim and Tammy out at Blue Cypress Lakeside, Lakeside Cabins. For some reason, I got a lone cabin stuck in my head. I think it's because of my gator tail nugget. Yeah, probably so. Yep. So anyway, go on out to Blue Cypress. It's a great place to stay there as well. It's right on the water. You can take your boat, dock it right up to the dock. You know, just tie it off to the dock. It's right outside the back door of the rooms. Great place to stay, right on the water. If you've not been on Blue Cypress Lake, it's every bit worth just staying there just to experience Blue Cypress Lake. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful lake, cypress trees all around. And when you get back over to M Canal and Zigzag, we mentioned this a lot, but until you put eyes on this location, you, you, you can't even come close to understanding the sheer beauty of that area as you go back in. It mm -hmm. just takes you back in time. I can just picture Indians hanging out you know, on the shores and just, it just crazy. Mm -hmm. You got to check it out. So anyway, uh, make sure you give them a call as well. Like Dave likes to say, it's a little bit more of a rustic location and uh, we can bring some food, but they got little kitchenettes there, refrigerator. So bring your food in, hang out on the back porch and have a great time. So. You know, all, the, all those guys' information will be down below. Make sure you hit them up. Let them know that we sent you. And uh, we're going to move on to bonus tip number six. Okay, so as we were talking about inspecting the trailer, um, we earlier talked about the mm -hmm. hub. and I was working on the hub. I happened to notice that my suspension on my trailer looked a little odd, so I did some further investigating. And next thing you know, I'm replacing most of my suspension on my trailer. Most this is exactly why I don't work on my trailer because as soon as you see one thing, it leads to another and another. You're better and off just to leave it alone. Let the axle fall off it, of it. You know, which that could have happened here. Yeah. So what you see here on the ground is the same part that we see back here. This is called an equalizer, and I don't know all the terminology for each thing, but this is a tandem axle trailer. It's a leaf spring for each axle. This. Uh, this equalizer is attached to, to the two leaf springs and it, it allows the axles to articulate mm -hmm. uh, to any bumps or, or anything like that. So what I found, and uh, I'm going to send Dave some pictures so you guys can see what I, what I was looking at. Um, it's supposed to look like this completed thing here, right. uh, but there were some things that were a little bit off. So, to give you guys an idea of what the problem was, these shackles, they sit up like this, and they're attached to each spring. Now, if you'll notice, these holes are an oblong-shaped hole. Every one of them is an oblong-shaped hole. They are not supposed to be an oblong-shaped hole. They are supposed to be perfectly round. That is how much wear was on these parts of my trailer. I replaced both sides. Um, I was thinking, well, I could get away with one, but mm -hmm. no, just do it all. Yep. Once you figure out how to do it, it's not that hard. I did it, but you have to have an angle grinder. I had to cut off the bolts, which I'll show you all some of these here soon. Um, I had to cut the bolts off and buy all new parts. Um, get the right size bolts, the right size parts. Don't go cheap, cheap on this stuff because um, you may have some problems. But these bolts hold everything together. Uh, one of my shackles had less than an eighth of an inch of metal at the top. Good grief. Um, I was close to losing it. Mm -hmm. um, if one of these breaks, now my axles are out of alignment and you can have some major, major issues. Um, not only were these holes worn, so the, these bolts, they, they ride inside these shackles and go through the spring, the leaf, the end of the leaf spring. Yep. Okay. Try to get it in place here. So not only were the shackles worn, but the bolts were worn. 
So if you can get a close shot of this, Dave, look at the bolt. This is supposed to be a round bolt, like any other bolt. And you can see the grooves are worn on both sides here. Maybe you can see it in front of that red shirt where it rode on, on the shackles. Um, all of this, once these things start to wear, guys, it, everything shakes and mm -hmm. rattles and clinks and causes more wear and more wear and more wear. When they're not tight like they're supposed to be and around in the proper shape holes, it causes more wear, more problems, and possibly some a catastrophic failure as in losing an axle. Right. You don't want that. That's bad news. Not at 80 um, miles an hour down the highway or 85. No. Yeah. If anybody says they don't run 85 with their boat behind them on the trailer, it's full of baloney because they're going to because they'll run 90 in a 25 too. So yeah, and they'll <laughs> so, run 70 on and the 25 lake. on the lake. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. uh, but these these bolts are not a regular bolt. They're they're a, a specially hardened bolt. And you notice there's no locking nut or locking washer on mm -hmm. this nut. I learned this just the other day. These nuts are specifically made for this application. If you look at a nut before you put it on, if you, one side the hole is round, the other side, they somehow mash that nut a little bit so it's out around. So when you torque it down, it uh, it locks on the bolt and doesn't back off. Gotcha. So make don't just go down to your local hardware store and just buy any old bolt. Uh, make sure you have the right things. And also, just like I mentioned about the brackets, I primed, I cleaned mm -hmm. with lacquer thinner, got all the oil off them. I cleaned, primed, and painted all these parts. Yep. Uh, this part here, everything there was just just raw steel. Yeah. Uh, I don't like rusty stuff. Rusty stuff begots rusty stuff, and rusty stuff is not cool. So I primed and painted everything, including the washer, the uh, bolts, nuts. You'll get more life out of your uh, your repair than you otherwise yeah, an would. extra hour or two of work for years of extended life right kind of makes it's sense worth it. yeah. definitely worth it especially for these saltwater guys don't you dare not paint try to make sure you get <laughs> at least galvanized if you can go stainless go stainless which these won't come in stainless because it's same thing softer metal uh but saltwater guys do not go cheap get get the best you can afford absolutely so. all right that's going to wrap up this bonus tip all right, folks, back with another tip. We're just about done, but hang in there because this one really, really is important. If you don't do this, you can really wind up into trouble mm -hmm. as well. So, Dan? No, we tie think? down straps. A what? Tie down straps. What are you tying down? Tying your boat to your trailer. Always, always, always tie down your boat. Why? I, because it'll come off the trailer when you don't <laughs> oh, want it to. Oh, okay. Not when you're putting it in the water. I've seen... Uh, I saw a flats boat in the middle of a uh, local road here years ago. Yep. The guy came down, so railroad tracks close. The boat slid off the trailer. The boat was entirely off of the trailer in the intersection. You don't want that. They'll move back and uh, forth. I, oh, yeah. Nope. I also saw a 27-footer in Melbourne that was in the bed of the pickup truck and partially onto the road. Um, somebody stopped short in front of him, I'm assuming. He right. had to slam on brakes. And I don't know if the boat was properly tied down, tied down or not, but it ended up in the bed of his truck, ruined his truck, ruined his day, ruined his boat. Don't want that. Yeah. Always strap down your boat, guys. Uh, this particular uh, boat trailer came with... Uh, uh, installed ratcheting tie down straps. Those are, so those are nice. They're great. They're kind yep. of expensive to replace because I really want to replace these. Uh, I'll get to it. Put it in your D ring and then you ratchet strap it down so it is tight. You don't yep. want your boat bouncing on the trailer because it causes unnecessary wear on your boat transom. and your trailer. Yep. Transom, your transom, motor bouncing. Motor bouncing. Don't need any of that. Yep. And if you don't have that type, you know, we've got the other type mm -hmm. that hook here and come around to our trailer and, yep. and they do the same thing. Put right, the or the kinds that go over the back yep. and then strap it down to the, uh, I, if the ones that, that go over the back on some of the oh, other boats here, I've here. had, yep. I always attach it. Don't attach it to your fender because it's just going to rip your fender off. Attach it to the <laughs> frame of the trailer right. and uh, get it down good and tight so it's all the boat and trailer. It then becomes one unit and it's tight. Or put an eye bolt on your trailer. Or an eye bolt. one already existing. But yeah, absolutely super important to keep that from, like mm -hmm. I said, bounce over place, working its way up this way, that way. You never know, you know. Yep. And when you're out on the road, you never know if you're going to have to make a fast stop 
like you were talking about. So, mm -hmm. yep. So definitely make sure you take the time to strap that boat down. Don't think, uh, it's not going anywhere. By the time you think that, then solve the trailer. Yep. And not, not just the back. Let's go take a look at the front. Hey, really appreciate everybody sticking with us all the way through this point. We got one more thing we're going to talk about here. Don't leave because I said one more thing because this is just as important as everything else. So go ahead, Dan, let's jump right into just tying down the front. So we have a uh, your boat winch. Everybody pretty much has a boat winch. Yep. We uh, latch it on, winch it up. I typically try to power load where it's safe. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I use my uh, ratchet strap, clip it on the uh, D-ring here. Got to go the right way. <laughs> get it down tight. I get mine nice and tight. Also on this, is that there's a safety that that is also attached. Most trailers come with a safety. If you got mm -hmm. one, use it. If you don't got one, get one. Uh, that way you can hook this onto the frame of the trailer. If if your winch strap happens to break. You've always got a safety there where the boat cannot slide off of the trailer. Right. So definitely worthwhile to tie the front of your boat, the bow, and the stern. Uh, again, make it all one nice tight unit, and uh, it's a safer, safer travel zone. Yeah, and make sure too when you're bringing it up, make sure that the the ring is all the way up against your roller here, because sometimes if it's not, you'll get you'll get some bounce, bounce, uh, bounce, yep. bounce, and you don't want that either. So always just make sure it's all the way up there, nice and tight, like you said, mm -hmm. and then. Um, your straps in the back you're good to go so yeah. folks that's going to uh wrap it up for the tips that we've got here on trailer maintenance well again we want to thank everybody for hanging through with this video i know sometimes we get you know kind of ah, i don't want to go mess with my trailer i don't feel like it it's hot it's cold it's this it's that every excuse under the sun not to go out and do the things we need to do but take the time to do it because it's going to save you money and aggravation down the road because mm -hmm. if you don't all of a sudden it's going to happen and then you're really going to be kicking yourself for not doing what you probably knew you should have done in the first place so thanks everybody for watching all the information is down below when it comes to hooking up with Dan, hooking up with Jerry, as far as guide trips, as far as going ahead and places to stay between um, Davis House and out at Blue Cypress. Check those things out. And if you want to take a kayak trip, Dave has got the fish dialed in out there. So uh, hook up with Dave for kayak fishing or um, in, out in the river doing uh, eco tours, manatees, porpoises, all kinds of fun, cool stuff you can do with him. And, and bow fishing, bow fishing. Bow fishing, I was about to say, we're gonna finish up with bow fishing. Yeah, the tilapia man. are everywhere. So if you feel like going yeah. out there and smoking some tilapia with the bows and arrows, give us a call and uh, we'll get you hooked up. We'll get you out there onto the fish and have some fun. Fun stuff. Have a blast. So thanks a lot, everybody. See you in the next one.